Do you guys like my mindset monsters? That was scary, right? This is my son's uh, Halloween costume. So I thought it was super appropriate for our topic today, conquering your mindset monsters. So I'm going to put this little cute fella in the background, not too far away, so we can remember how scary he is. We'll set him in the back there. Um, yeah, so today we are on week three of our series, Fall Back in Love with Your Travel Business. And if you guys are popping on uh, live, please go ahead and put a comment in because we're streaming several places. I just want to make sure we are live over on Facebook too. So let me just double check there real quick. Take a little peek a -roo. Make sure, make sure, technical, technical. That's the thing when you stream in all these places. Yay, I see us. Okay, we're good. Awesome. So today we are talking about conquering your mindset monsters, a super, super relevant topic uh, if you're feeling stuck. Hey, Stephanie, if you're feeling stuck, if you've been trying to grow your business, um, mindset monsters are one of those things that can kind of sneak up on you and really put a big kink in your operation if you don't recognize them and especially if you don't address them, right? So first of all, I want to just say welcome. And I know people are popping in, so I usually wait a minute or two before we get into the good, good content. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Cindy Williams, the travel career coach. My handle is at Wanderlust CEO on Instagram. And my purpose in life is to motivate and inspire people to follow their bliss into abundance. Like you can follow your bliss, but if you don't make money, it won't be your bliss very long, right? So follow your bliss into abundance. One of the ways that I do that is through my advocacy work uh, for the travel industry, which is part of uh, this free session and this free series that we're doing in the month of October. The other piece is I run a program called Careers on Vacation for people who are really serious about hijacking growth and growing their business and all that good stuff. So I started in the travel industry in 1993. Oh my gosh, I was such a baby. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later with a story that's relevant to mindset uh, mastery or conquering those mindset monsters. Um, you know, so that's me. And I, oh, I love coffee mugs. I always say that. This is from my friend Fazana Natasha. I have some lipstick there. <laughs> uh, in Toronto. And this is Niagara Falls, part of the, um, I think it's the, you Are, yeah, the You Are Here series. I love these from Starbucks. So I love coffee mugs and I love the color purple. So that's me in a nutshell. Now, let's get into, let's get straight into the content for today, okay? So, conquering mindset monsters. First of all, you're like, Cindy, what the hell is a mindset monster, <laughs> right? So, a mindset monster is a thought or a belief, okay? A thought or a belief that's preventing you from achieving your goals or preventing you from growing or preventing you in some way of accomplishing whatever you want to accomplish in life, whether that's running a travel business, having a successful family, whatever. Mindset Monster doesn't just have to be in travel businesses. So a thought or a belief that's basically holding you back. And some of us don't even realize that they're there. And that's the really spooky stuff. So that's why the play on monsters, right? Because it's, it's so relevant in terms of, you know, if you're trying to reach your potential or reach a goal, and there's something that's uh, working against you that you don't even realize, how do you recognize it and how do you fix it? So that's what today's session is all about. So just like a monster, you don't always realize that that belief is there, right? Um, they're sneaky, they're devious, they're harmful. And so getting a hold of them and fixing it is so, so crucial. And I want to just illustrate with a, a little study here. So in the, maybe you guys have heard this story, maybe you haven't, but in the circus, the way that they train elephants, like have you ever seen elephants and they have them there and they have like this rope around their ankle, right? And you're thinking, oh my gosh, like this, what is this, a two ton animal? It could like rip that rope off in a second, right? But here's, here's how they train elephants. When they're little itty bitty babies, they tie this big thick rope around their ankle right? They tie it and the, and the elephant tries to get away and it pulls its leg and it keeps pulling 
eventually it figures out that it can't get out of the rope. It can't, right? So it forms a belief. When that rope is around my ankle, I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck here in this little tiny circle, right? So when the elephant grows up, they don't have to restrain the elephants in big cages. They just put that rope around them and they're literally bound by their mind. That elephant could rip that rope in two seconds when it's two tons, not when it's a couple hundred pounds, right? But when it's two tons, it could, it could be flying off. So that's what I'm talking about when we get into beliefs you might not even realize that you have that are holding you back. And this could come from childhood. It could come from failures that you may have had and you formed a belief or an opinion about a certain failure that you couldn't do something or that something wasn't possible. Um, and that's a very dangerous thing because it prevents you from growth and a lot of times it prevents you from your growth, from your goals. So how the heck do you recognize if you're the baby elephant, right? How do you recognize? So the first way to kind of tell if you have a rope around your ankle or you have a mindset monster around your shoulder is assess and be aware of the excuses that you use for things. Ooh, right? So, and this is, look, I don't know what your excuses are. I have my own excuses. Hey, Beth, good to see you. Um, and I'm going to use one of my own case studies to show you guys how I work through this process on a regular basis when, cause I have mine, everybody has mindset monsters. It's how you deal with them that determines a successful person versus someone who just gets stuck. So I'm going to give you that process today. So look at what excuses you use. And we're going to go through the top three that I hear from my clients as well. What excuses do you tell yourself? I can't do this. I could never do what that person does. I, you know, uh, because of time, because of money, because of resources, because of my capabilities, whatever those uh, excuses are, start there to go, hmm, is there something more to that? Is that the rope around my ankle, right? And then look at what your beliefs are about your business. And I ask people this sometimes because like my job's to coach, right? To wake you up a little bit. Sometimes that requires me shaking your shoulders, you know, virtually <laughs> and just saying, look, you don't even realize you're putting yourself in this box. You're putting yourself in this framework. Once we work past that, stuff's going to happen and it's going to open up for you. But what are your beliefs about your business? Do you really believe you can have a six-figure business? Who do you, who are you to think that, right? I'm playing the, you know, the voice in your head. Um, or if you're like, oh, if they did it, I should be able to do it. I'm capable. I'm smart. I'm, you know, able. But if you, like, so I had, let me give you an example straight out of real life. I did a post on our Careers on Vacation group. If you're not already following that, it's awesome. So request to join. It's a free group we have here, here on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, go to Facebook and join it. Um, and I said, what would you do when, to celebrate your first $100,000 year, your first six-figure year in the travel industry? And some people were like, oh, I, I, this is what I did because I've already hit that. That's amazing. Some people are like, oh, I would just be so happy. Other people were like, oh my gosh, I would do this goal or I would go, I would track for the next hundred thousand, right? So we had all these great responses and a couple of the responses were just like, it'll never happen. So why am I even thinking about it? And it kind of broke my heart because that's the, that is the rope around the elephant's ankle talking. That, that those people, you know, they're good agents. They have starter agencies. Could they get there? They could, but they never will unless they believe it. If you don't believe it's possible, that's, it's not, right? Like what does Yoda say? <laughs> do or do not, there is no, try no, the other quote. He's, uh, Luke says, uh, I don't believe I can like pull the ship. Remember when they're in the swamp and he's trying to pull the ship out of uh, the swamp or whatever and Yoda's like, keep trying. And he, you know, he, and Luke goes, oh, and it just kind of rumbles. Now, oh, he does it again, it rumbles. And he's like, I can't do it, Luke tells Yoda. And Yoda's like, and that's why you fail. <laughs> Because you don't believe it, right? So part of it is if you can't believe something about your business, hey, Michelle, nice to see you. If you can't believe it's possible, start there and then go, well, take a step back and go, I didn't even realize I was putting that belief on myself, right? In the South, we have the same, like, don't put that on yourself. Like, don't claim that. Don't claim that when it's bad stuff or stuff that you don't want to show up in your life. So don't claim it, right? 
Uh, so if you're having those thoughts or those beliefs, just recognize it. That's the first step. You have to know what limiting beliefs do I have, right? And what excuses am I giving myself? <clears throat> I can't make 100000 because I have kids and a full-time job. I can't do six figures in my business because... Uh, my leads suck. I'm getting a bunch of tire kickers. This is just a big waste of time. I can't, so see how I'm externalizing? I'm blaming in those, in those ways. Like here's, I'm giving myself an out, like, well, it's not me, right? It's because of these things. So again, we'll talk about how to fix that. It, it, there's no blame here or there. It's just that this is the way that you identify those limiting beliefs. Okay. And go, Ooh, and I'm going to share one out of my personal life. That's very personal. Uh, in just a little bit and how, what I did about that. So recognize that rope that's around your ankle. Now let's talk about the most common ones that I hear for cl from our clients, right? So we work with hundreds of uh, travel agents and agency owners on an annual basis to supersize and grow their businesses. And I've kind of identified the top three things where people get stuck and what they tell me and what we have to work them past. The first one is time. And this is a lot of, a lot of time, the reason why People can't get started, right? Oh, I'm such a trainer right now. Get excited. Look at my little time, right? So this is time, right? It's not evil. There's nothing wrong with time. It's how you use your time. But when you tell yourself, I'm not an artist. I should have had my son do this. When you tell yourself, <laughs> when you tell yourself, that looks menacing, right? I'm trying to make this guy look scary. You tell yourself, I don't have time, right? I don't have time because my kids need me. I don't have time because blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to tell you how to, you know, flip that one upside down. And I'm going to tell you a story out of my life too, right? So let's flip this guy on his head and think about this a different way. I had a, when I was in college, I minored in theater, right? Big surprise, right? <laughs> and I had this amazing teacher named Fred Sabolski and you know, the kids were complaining, I don't have time to learn my lines. I don't have time. I got school and I got a job and, you know, college life is busy. And he got so mad one day and he was like, look, he's like, stop using that as an excuse. You have all the time in the world. He's like, if you tell me you don't have time, what that really means is you are not placing a priority on what you want to do. You want to be the lead in the play. You want this uh, production to be successful, but you don't have time to learn your lines. He's like, you have unlimited time. Use the time you're walking between classes to run your lines. Use the time that you're, uh, instead of calling a friend on the phone, use your, instead of going to that party on Friday night, use that time. When you're in the car driving to and from campus, use that time. You make time for the things that are important. Period. So when you say, uh, you know, so basically what he was saying is like, first take ownership over it, right? And how you not use time as an excuse is instead of saying, oh, I don't have time to do this or I don't have time to do that, you have to switch that thinking to go, you know what, I'm just not making a priority. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but rather than externalizing it and saying, the reason I can't be successful, the reason I can't have a six-figure business, the reason I can't be the star of the play, the reason blah, 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 is because I don't have time. No, it's because you're not putting it at the top of the list of things you want to do. So when people tell me, I don't have time to uh, commit to taking the program or doing coaching or working on my business. That's fine. But instead of saying you don't have time, saying I'm not willing to make my business a priority right now. That's the reality. I am not willing to make my business or insert whatever the, the thing you're, the goal you're trying to work on a priority right now, because then you own it and it's okay. That's totally fine. Like if you, if your kids are more important through the holiday season and other things are more important, that's perfectly fine. But rather than externalize it to time, take ownership over, uh, over that piece. So that's the first one. Time, time, time. And look, I did that in under five minutes. Our little friend here is still going. <laughs> So that time is one of those mindset monsters and it's an easy one because it gives you an out, right? It gives you an excuse to get out of whatever the thing is that you want to accomplish. Oh, I didn't do it because I didn't have time. Well, you didn't do it because it wasn't the, the most important thing. Okay. So just own that piece. This is part of just recognizing what the excuse is, taking ownership over and later we're going to get to how to fix it in just a few minutes. The next mindset monster is fear of change, right? Listen. 
Change is not easy. When you commit to saying, I am going to fill in the blank, I am going to lose weight, grow my business, um, have a better relationship with my husband or wife, I am going to make six figures, whatever the fill in the blank is for you. When you make the decision, the next step is your ego goes, ah, you know what, we're kind of good where we're at. Like, I know you hate your corporate job and I know life sucks every day and I know you'd love to work from home and all these things seem like a wonderful fantasy, but it's going to require change and change is uncomfortable. Change is uncertain. So the ego's job is to go, oh, maybe we're just okay where we're at. Maybe we're just okay. And that's why people get stuck there. That's why that monster is so powerful. You will never make a transformation in your life or business until you get over that fear of change. You have to go through change to uh, to arrive, right? The butterfly has to go through the process of uh, being a caterpillar to become the butterfly. It has to literally go through that process. And so do you if you're going to evolve to the next beautiful thing that you or your business is going to be. So, but the ego all day long wants to hold you down. We're okay. It's, it's enough. We have just enough. Just enough is good enough. Just enough is good enough. You have to take control back over, right? You have to put yourself back in the driver's seat and go, Listen, ego, we are making an adjustment. We're going a different direction. Here's the new coordinates on my GPS. We're going here, right? So you, it requires you to take charge of that ego process. Um, and stop coasting. Stop coasting in your life. So many people that, um, you know, get to the end of our program, they're like, oh my gosh, one of the things I didn't realize I was doing is like, I've been sitting with this subpar business for so many years I should have freaking done this years ago, right? Or whatever cha big change they needed to make in their life, whether it be getting rid of tire kickers, whether it be making a change in their process, whether it be automating, which can save you so much time and fixes fixes the mindset monster number one time, right? Like all of a sudden you have all this time back because you know how to freaking automate your business and work, le work less and make more, right? But back to fear of change, um, you have to stop coasting. Like if that, I know it's cozy. Oh my God, it's such a cozy place. Like, oh, here I am. Da, da, da. And look, I get there too. Cause I'm like, oh my gosh, the businesses, like our businesses haven't made under multiple six figures for 10 plus years. So I could sit back and be like, oh yeah, I don't need a live stream. Oh yeah, I don't need to give back. Oh yeah, I don't need to do any of this stuff. I could really easily do that. But if I'm going to keep evolving and live my purpose and grow my businesses and follow the trail of ambition that I want to, I have to keep myself out of coasting mode. And sometimes I go back into it. Like when you take a three week trip or something, like, like you're going to coast a little bit, but you have to come back and push yourself a little bit past that fear of change. What's the next big thing you want to do? So think about that. And, um, the last thing with the fear of change is the other reason why people don't like to do it is it's going to freaking take work. Like you're not going to get anything more out of your business unless you work for it. So like, yes, I can hand you a program that tells you A to Z and work with you and all that good stuff. But if you don't actually do the work, you don't go put the marketing techniques at play. You don't go do the automation. You don't go do the things um, or whatever you're trying to do. If you don't take action and do those things and do the work that's required to make the change, then it's never going to happen. And let's face it, like most people aren't really willing to work that hard. I'm not saying this is you, but you know, you know the ones, right? They're like, oh, I wish I had a, you know, six figure business. I wish I had a yacht or I wish I had a Jaguar. Or I wish I had a BMW, but they're not, are they, but they're not willing. They're the same person that's like calling out sick on Friday, right? <laughs> it's like, all right, lofty goal, Louise, right? <laughs> like, how are you going to get your BMW if you only show up to work every third shift, right? So... Most people aren't willing to do the work to get past fear of change or do the work in general to make their businesses successful. Now, if that's not you and you are willing to do the work, part of the work is getting past this mindset stuff, right? All right, number three biggest thing that we hear, and this is such a juicy one, and it, and it, and it happens to your kids all the time, and I promise you coach them past it, fear of failure. Oh my gosh, fear of failure. What if I fail? What if I spend this money and it doesn't work? 
What if I try this and it's a big disaster? What, you know, I tried a Facebook ad and it didn't work. Well, it probably didn't work because you didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> That's okay. Trust me, we've all had, <laughs> we've all had words with Facebook ads. But whatever the thing is, you're afraid to fail again or you're afraid, worse yet, you're afraid to even try. You're afraid to even try because you don't want to fail. Oh, it's so bad. You'll never, you'll never get there. Faith, it, here's a th here's the difference between successful people and people who aren't successful. And listen, I, you know, started in the industry almost 25 years ago now. It'll be 25 years this spring. Um, and I've seen a lot of people that are in that million dollar club year after year after year. And I've seen people who, who want it but struggle. The biggest difference between the two is really knowing the fear, feeling the fear, and doing it freaking anyway. You feel the fear and you do it anyway. That is the only way you grow. Same thing with your kids, right? So we actually tell our kids, like when our kids make a mistake, like my son was uh, helping clean up the kitchen. That's like one of his new chores this week. And um, my dad had made something that had like some, he had foil down, had grease on the pan, right? So my son's wrapping it up and he goes to take it to the trash can and all the, you know, the, the juice or whatever spills all over the kitchen floor. Now we could have freaked out and went, oh, corn, blah, 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 blah. So, but uh, I've, I learned this from my husband. I love this. I looked at him and I said, what did you learn? <laughs> right? Like you made a mistake. It is what it is. But what did you learn? As long as you are learning from your failures, that means you are growing. That means you are you're moving past. That means he's probably not going to make that mistake again. But had he not, had I made him feel bad about it or ugly about it or, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm bad or I did something wrong. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to get yelled at. And so some of this comes from our childhood, right? Because if you did grow up in one of those environments where it's like, da, 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 right? Um, you start to go, oh, I don't want to fail. Failure is the worst thing. I felt, you know, not being loved because then you attach love to it. And it's like, if I fail, that means I'm not loved or I'm not, you know, uh, considered good. So those are some really deep things. Sometimes you have to dig out to like figure out why it's hard for you to push past failure, right? And listen, let me tell you the best story ever. So I like, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I have a whole video on uh, YouTube. It's called about the time I got fired. Oh, <laughs> me, Cindy Williams, travel industry expert and advocate got fired in the travel industry. So uh, briefly, my first job, right, fresh out of travel school, I went and worked for this travel agency in our town, which will remain nameless. And uh, look, I was, it was my first real job. Like I wore like a little suit every day and I was like, I kind of like the job was to be a receptionist and calls would come in and we would direct them to agents. It was a corporate travel agency and they had me and then they had a lady who was like in her 30s. So here I am, 19 year old, 30 year old. And I didn't know what to do in between the calls. So I kind of like sat there like, and I didn't take my lunches. I was just like, let me just sit here and do my job, right? And it wasn't that I wasn't, wasn't not doing my job, but it was like the other lady was like making guides up and she was making laminates and doing extensions. And I didn't see all the stuff because we worked opposite shifts, right? So they brought me in after about a month and they're like, look, we're just, we're going to put so-and-so in the job full time because, you know, we appreciate you trying, but we're not sure the travel industry is for you, uh, but we wish you the best, blah, 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 blah. If I had, right, so I basically got let go, right? <laughs> and needless to say, I went and worked for their competitor and within a year I was selling a million dollars and I went on to sell a million dollars a year for that company for many, many years. So it's not that I wasn't capable, but had I stopped, had I taken that failure and said, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Like I just went to travel school. My dad just paid all this money to send me to travel school. And I just got, I mean, I had never been fired from a job. I was like, oh my gosh. So at first I cried about it, got upset about it. But then I was like, no. And then it created a fire in me. It created a fire in me to go, I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. And I did. And I went to the other company. And I don't know if Marcy's watching. She was my first boss. And she's she's on my team now. But <laughs> Marcy was my supervisor. And she was like, who is this girl making these numbers? And I told her, put me next to the people. Like, I was on a mission. And then for, like, the next few years, I would um, send a picture and a card to that old agency. <laughs> 
<laughs> of me getting my award for the million dollars. And I was like, hey, hope you guys are doing well. I'm happy holidays. <laughs> the best revenge, right? But had I let that fear get to me, had I let it consume me and quit, I would have never gone on to be a million dollar agent. I would have never gone on to win national awards for training. I would have never gone on to run my own super successful travel agency. I would never have gone on to have careers on vacation that is helping hundreds of people a year supersize their agencies, right? So you see how that path, you know, so every time you rub up something that's uncomfortable or it fears, it feels fearful, it's okay to feel the fear. That is natural. But your, the prize, the pot of gold, it is just two steps outside of your comfort zone. It is two steps past the fear. Every time you work past the fear, you are rewarded. That is just how it works. So if your mindset monster is fear, think about that. I, you know, this feels uncomfortable, but it might be what, what's required to grow, right? When I, when I bought my first, um, like consulting program. It was like $7,000. And, but I was like, I think this consultant can really help me do what I'm trying to accomplish with my goals. And I like went back and forth and back and forth. Like, do I do this? And we invested in that program. And I say invested because when you're, when you're spending money for your business, it's an investment in your future profits. Um, so I, you know, I vetted them like normal and went through that process. And that $7,000 investment turned into $170,000 more in profits the next year. Hello. It was so scary, right? To go, oh my gosh, here it is. So, but that's one of those things when you rub up against that fear, if you know it's what you need or you know it's what to take you to that next level, or maybe it's a fear of getting on camera, maybe it's a fear of a million different things, whatever your thing is that you have to push past, you have to feel the fear and do it anyway. All right. So, you don't try, you'll never get there. That's the last thing. You, um, how does the, I hate, I'd always try to use sports stuff and then my husband laughs at me when he watches stuff later. But what do they say? You miss, a hun you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Go make some freaking mistakes. Go have some failures because the failures build on this mountain. And then when you get to the top, you're like, because I learned this, I did this because I learned this. So don't be afraid to fail. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes as long as you're learning from your mistakes. That's the other thing. Don't be afraid to fail. Failure is a good thing. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to feel that in your soul. Like you're going to probably buy a crappy book or a crappy program or some, something along the way that's not going to be the best or how many crappy programs you have on your computer you haven't even bothered to open right now, right? So who cares? You're starting from today and moving on. So feel that fear and move on. So now let's talk about how are we going to slay these mindset monsters? How are we going to slay them? First step to recap, you have to find and identify what the heck are your monsters? What's the rope that's around your ankle, the imaginary rope like in the elephant story? What is your limiting belief? So think about that today. What? How am I limiting myself by thoughts? Do I not believe I can make a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars? Or do I not believe I can get rid of tire kickers? Do I not believe? Whatever the thing is. So figure out, and how you do that is remember, say, what excuses am I always telling myself? <laughs> what excuses am I always telling myself? I'm going to do my case study in a second. So the excuses will point you in the direction of what your monster is. So examine your excuses that you use, okay? Um, own your monster. You're going to own your monster. What do I mean by that? You need to take radical responsibility over the fact that if I'm saying it's time, right? Like we talked about earlier, if I'm saying it's time, it's really not, I don't have enough time. Cause like, let's, let's be real. Like how much time do you guys spend on Facebook? <laughs> like, I know you're probably watching me on Facebook right now, but this is training. This doesn't count. But how much time do you screw off and play on, you know, Facebook or, you know, I don't know, Instagram, YouTube videos that just aren't, they're just silly because you're tired at the end of the day and whatever. That's, it's just wasted time that you could be productive with or doing self-care so you can re, you know, regenerate. Even if you go back to the, go back to the eighties and nineties when they taught you time management, if you guys were in the industry back then, or even if you're in any business back then, the first thing they tell you to do is do not go directly to your email in the morning. Right? Why? Because you're going to get tied up into 18 rodeos. You don't need to get, you haven't even set your intention for the day. Time management 101 is don't look at Facebook and Instagram first thing in the morning. Don't look at your email first thing in the morning. You take a moment to set your intention, right? So owning 
the fact when it comes back to time, you have control over your time. You have 100% control over your time. If you uh, get roped into birthday parties and stuff for your kids that you really don't want to do, start telling some people no, right? Tell them no if it's, if it's not authentic and doesn't connect with what you really want to do this weekend and then spend that time on the stuff you really do want to do or something that's going to get you to your goal. So own that monster. I am giving myself an out because I keep saying time, but what it really is is I just don't care quite enough to accomplish this goal. So if I want to ever accomplish this goal, I need to either make it important enough or just say, you know what, forget it, like focus on something else, right? So own your monster. And then adopt a hero's journey. Adopt a hero's mentality. What do I mean by that? Um, when you fix and move past this stuff and you identify what your monster is and you decide, oh my gosh, I'm gonna slay this monster. This is just part of your amazing story someday. I mean, I we've had several evolutions. You guys probably have too. You've worked past something in your life that you had to step up and have courage for. You had to be a hero in your own life to get you to the next level. So adopt that hero's mentality and recognize whatever stress you're going through right now, whatever struggle you're going through, it's just going to be part of your great story in the future when you decide to work past it, if you decide to work past it. But you have to adopt that. I'm going to be the hero of my own life. No one is going to save you. And that's part of owning your monster. No one's coming to save you. There's no Prince Charming. There's no magic pill. You know, you're going to have to do the work and you're going to have to show up in your life to make stuff happen. Um, and then slay the bugger. That's the, la the, the last piece of the process. Commit to defeating that monster and create your plan. When those limiting thoughts come up, what are you going to do? Um, if you have a goal, what are you going to do about it, right? Slaying that monster. So quick case study out of my life. I was working, like my dad had a pacemaker put in a couple months ago and it was really traumatic. Like we weren't sure what was wrong with his heart and he in and out of the hospital. So I have been thinking a long time, like I need to get healthier. I need to work out. But what was I saying? You guys know what I was saying. I don't have time for that. I'm running I'm running all these businesses, I'm busy, I have this community that, you know, counts on me. So I was using the time excuse, right? I don't have time to work out. BS, I just didn't care enough to do it. So what did I do? My excuse was I don't have time to do it. And then, so that I found out, I figured out, I took ownership over the fact that I was letting myself, giving myself an out and not owning the fact that I just didn't care enough about getting healthy. Um, second thing is, uh, I decided I was going to work on it, right? So I said, I'm, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to own it. I recognize and came up with a new, you know, if I care, I'm going to care enough about it. I'm putting it as a, I'm making it a priority. And then the last thing and most important thing is you have to take action. You have to take action to fix it. And look, I know, like, I know myself really well, and I don't have long endurance for sticking to like an athletic plan. <laughs> it's just not me. So I knew for to get results, I was going to have to do something drastic. So when I had that moment of courage, I picked up the phone. Actually, I went to Google and I Googled, you know, uh, trainers in my area. And I called this lady, left her message. She called me right back and I'm like, book me for three sessions. And then, and then I had a heartburn. So I'm like, oh my God, I haven't worked out with a trainer in years. Hey, Margie. I know the monster talk. It's such, it's good stuff, right? Um, so I haven't worked out in years. I was just dreading it. And then, um, but look, we're six weeks in. I've been working out twice a week. I'm losing weight. We're getting results. I'm feeling better. I have more energy and, uh, I'm getting results because I pushed past the fear. I was like, I don't want to do this, but I knew I had to make myself do it. I had to push past that fear because the results are just on the other side. So that's a super personal case study straight out of my life, right? So to recap, if you guys are struggling in your travel businesses, figure out what your monsters are, take ownership, radical responsibility over your thinking and how you're going to handle it, commit to making a change, and then take action. You have to take action. If um, it's something small you need help with, go get the help. If you are looking to really supersize and get out of hobby state and, um, you know, do have a big business, have the best 2000 <laughs> What is my, I like it, you're here with me while I, yeah, I'm gonna, you guys so silly. We're getting, we have like a ton of comments coming in, so sorry if I'm not getting to all of them, guys. Um, but take action because that's where you're going to get results. If you're struggling with your travel business and you don't know about careers on vacation, make the call. You want to work with me? You want me to help you supersize your business? 
make the freaking make the freaking appointment to talk about your discovery call. Like, look, we're not like high pressure. We're like, what are your goals? What do you want to do? Let's see if it's a match for you to work with, with Cindy directly. Or if it's something with your husband, you're trying to fix your relationship, make a freaking counseling appointment, make a decision that's going to push you forward and push you past your comfort zone to get you where you want to be. And I promise the results are on the other side. All right. Let me check these comments here real quick. And then I'm going to tell you, we have a $5,000 gift today. I am not even joking. So let me check these comments real quick. Hey, Mert, I missed yours. Mert's a client. Steph's a client. Hey, Tina. Hey, Kenya, another one of our awesome clients. Hey, Beth. Michelle, Margie, another one of my great clients, and uh, Danielle. Yeah, welcome, guys. So if you guys have your own mindset monsters, pop them in there so we can all share. But I, I have... As part of my advocacy work, I always do some cool stuff like these free sessions. But this year, I have the most amazing holiday giveaway. And it is only, only, only for uh, the people that are going to get it in advance are everyone who watches these live streams, right? So you guys have waited till the end of the call. So you're going to get uh, a special pre-release. So on October, around October 31st, by the end of the month, I actually spent 5000 Hey, Stacy, I actually spent $5,000 of my own money, $5,000 to create a beautiful video for your customers, and it's entitled, Why Savvy Clients Use Travel Agents. It does not publicize any particular agency. It is interviewing uh, industry experts and agency owners from across the country. But again, it does not promote any particular agency. This was a video made for you, my community, that you can take that video out. And when people say, why should I use a travel agent? Oh, my God. You can host this uh, video on your pages. You can share it on your social media. Um, and, uh, we're giving it away for free. It costs you nothing. It's my gift from me to you. So how do you get this amazing video? So to get the pre-release of the video, first of all, if you're a client or, uh, a past client, a graduate of careers on vacation, you don't have to do anything. You're already going to get it in advance. We have your emails already. So we're going to send that to you and we're going to share it in the groups. Margie says, yippee. I know, right? Because I know you guys love that question when you get it from clients. And so how nice is it going to be to have a tool that we can all use in the industry to promote and support uh, the industry as a whole? So to get this video, you have to today go to careersonvacation.com backslash savvy clients, S-A-V-V-Y-C-L-I-E-N-T-S, careersonvacation.com backslash savvy clients. You will then be put in the queue, and when uh, the video wraps up, it's in final edits now, you are going to get the first copy of that video before anybody else gets it, because that's your treat for staying all the way to the end of the live stream. So make sure you guys go there today and sign up for that. Again, if you're a grad graduate or a client, don't worry about it. I'm going to send it. You'll have it already. Um, <laughs> Stephanie says, my monster is imposter. Yes, I love it. Mindset monster. I don't know how I won't do pertains to many things. Yeah, some of us have a lot of them, guys, and that's the thing to work past it. So follow the process that we walked through today to start you on that journey and listen. If uh, if you really want to get serious about growing your travel business, one, go over to YouTube and look at all of our testimonials of all the uh, companies and great agents and owners we've worked with this year that have doubled, tripled, supersized their businesses in the past year. Why can't that be you? Why are you letting that mindset monster hold you back from making a decision that could literally a year from now change your freaking entire life? Um, so if you want to work with me directly, careersonvacation.com backslash uh, ready now, and you can do a free discovery call with my team. And if it's a fit, we'll talk about working together. Um, Chelsea says, talk to Caitlin yesterday. I'm getting cut off on the comments. But, and then it's cutting off your comments. Let's talk to Caitlin yesterday, but that's all it says. So, but at any rate, guys, I love you guys so much. Have a great week. No, oh, don't forget, next week, I might even be in, in the agency in Houston next week, so from my brick and mortar. But um, next week, we the topic is things that are scary in your business. That's going to be the free live stream. And then on 1031, I'm doing an open session which means you can ask me any question that you want to ask. I only do that like once a year. Um, hey, Chelsea, you want to uh, chat with me about some questions? Okay. 
Um, I'm gonna tag in Stephanie on this and we'll get you on my calendar so we can have a quick chat. Um, so the last week, the last week of the month, I only do like an open session like that once or twice a year where you can say, Cindy, I have a question about Facebook ads. Cindy, I have a question about social media. Cindy, what the hell is IGTV? Cindy, whatever the millions of questions. You guys know I'm like a marketing freaking master. I love marketing. It's like what I eat, breathe, and sleep, and but translating it for the travel industry. So anything you guys want to ask on 1031, and I'm going to, uh, Becky, I know you're watching this later, Becky. I have selected a costume, so it's going to be good. So last thing to say, right? Don't let this guy get in your way, y'all. Do not let him get in your way. He is, he's, he's empty inside. There's not really anything there. Let's get rid of him. You guys got this. I love you so much. And uh, Heather says, free time with Cindy. Yay, that's right. All right, I love you guys. We'll talk soon. Have a great day. <laughs>